All right, this is my part two video, lesson two, on position tolerance. And if you didn't see part one, go back and watch that because it's really important to try to get those concepts that I'm going to build on for this video. Uh, like in the first video, I'm starting out with the concept of a dartboard, but instead of messing around with all these numbers in different places that you can score on, on playing darts, I'm simplifying this to just a bullseye. We, I, I play darts with just a bullseye, and I see if I can hit that bullseye. And the reason I do that is because it's this is really similar to geometric dimensioning tolerancing for, uh, for position tolerance. Because with darts, we are, everybody knows with darts, you're trying to get the tip of that dart inside of the circle. And yeah, we're all aiming for that exact center, that true center, or as they would say, true position that is that uh, theoretically exact middle of the, of the bullseye. But we all intuitively know that as long as that dart lands somewhere in this bullseye, it's a bullseye. We don't say, oh, yeah, you are you didn't get a bullseye because you didn't get right in the middle. It's like, no, as long as you land in there somewhere, you've got a bullseye. And this is too skinny of a dart to really make much sense for, for manufacturing of parts, so I go with a big, wide one here. Same story. Get that tip of that dart somewhere in here, and it's not really about, at this point, it's not really about the feature. People get confused. You, you see all these examples with with circles everywhere, and it's like, gosh, which one's the part and which one's the the uh, the the zone? Well, this is why I'm simplifying it. This is a bullseye. Did I get the center of whatever feature I have in the bullseye? Think of that dart. Did the 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 pin or the needle of that dart land in the bullseye? Then yes, it's a good part. For this lesson, we're going 3D. Okay, so we're slicing, I'm going to slice this dartboard and turn it up on edge. Let's set that thing over here. And it looks like this. So my bullseye now, I've sliced it in half, so I've got half that bullseye up on top. Still the same rules. The needle of my dart has to land somewhere in that bullseye. Yes, there's a true center that now has depth to it as well. That it's a it's a perfect line that would that would go all the way from the absolute center of this to the center on the bottom. But that's just that's just the center of the target, the center of the bullseye. I only care if the center of my dart or my feature lands completely within this zone. Now, it's kind of hard to illustrate with this big fat dart on there, so my, uh, my dart that I have now is this. And we think of the tip of that dart landing somewhere in the bullseye. And by the way, when you're playing darts, the tip doesn't just land right against the surface, right? I mean, it, for the dart to stick into the dartboard, it has to... It has to dig in there some, so that's what we're doing, is we're, we're taking the tip of that dart and we're sticking it into the bullseye. But with gd &T, we care about the whole feature being there inside of the part, so we're going to mash this feature, this dart, uh, all the way inside of the dartboard. Hopefully, hopefully that's not too, uh, too much of a stretch. So let's say we're all the way over on this edge and we're going to come straight in in perfect alignment with, with, that, uh, with the dartboard. So we are on the edge, this, the center line, the center needle of our dart or our feature is all the way just inside the edge of our bullseye from top to bottom. And that virtual circle that we talked about just like when we were in the in the first lesson, where the dart it lands here and it uh, leaves a shadow of this circle, it lands there and leaves a shadow of this circle there. It leaves it makes all these circles on there when we go to the extremes, which is then encircled by this. Uh, we had a a virtual circle that we knew 
that that dart or that peg would never fall outside of. And that circle is represented here, then in full depth on the part. And just like in the example from Lesson 1, we bring this thing all the way to that edge where the center is still inside of our bullseye, and it doesn't exceed that virtual circle or that virtual boundary. The uh, GD&T calls it virtual condition. I just I don't like to, to uh, rely on the terminology if I don't have to. And then we bring it in all the way on this side as far as we can bring it over, and it doesn't violate the boundary on that side, that virtual, that virtual condition boundary. And now that we have depth, we see that it's not just the circle at the top, but we can sit here and, and angle this thing. You know, if I, if I start to come outside of my, my bullseye that has depth, now my feature starts to violate that, that virtual condition boundary. And same thing on this side. If I come out this way, it will start to violate it. If I come out here on the top, it starts to violate that boundary. So it's important that the center line of our feature stays within uh, that, that bullseye and the full depth of the, of the bullseye. Because, yeah, I was drawing, uh, where's my, I was drawing these circles on here and saying, yeah, I have to make sure that my, that my drill bit or whatever stays on center of this thing, but this is just on the surface. The truth is that the, the, uh, the bullseye extends to whatever depth of the feature that I'm going to make. It goes to the, if, if I could, I'd draw a bullseye all the way in the bottom of that hole and show that, yeah, I've got to hit that bullseye all the way through. And if I'm at a slight angle, that's okay, but it still has to, the, the, you can kind of think of a, of a needle down the center of this drill bit, just as if it were a dart, and that has to fall within that bullseye. So I've got some, that, that bullseye gives me some error for position, it gives me error for uh, orientation, if you will, but it has to land within the bullseye. Now, that's for the, uh, for the peg, and it's the same situation for the hole. So here's my attempt at, at illustrating that for the hole. I'll get these out of the way. So again, this is the we, we consider this line my center line of my here's my hole. That's the, the best illustration I can do here. And let's put that center line all the way to one side and look we don't violate this virtual boundary. And if we put that hole all the way over here, we don't violate the boundary on that side either. And I can uh, just, it's exactly the same that it, it covers, we've got position and we're also covering orientation because there's a maximum angle that, uh, that this center line will still fit inside of the our, our bullseye, our nice deep, because remember this is a dart board with some depth to it, it and it's as deep as whatever feature it is, the, the hole or the, or the peg. Now let's see if this works when we bring both the peg and the hole in alignment. And I apologize, some of my, my ink is rubbing off on my, on my transparencies here. So we're going to run our hole all the way off to this edge. And again, it's not violating that boundary. And we're going to put this guy all the way in on this edge. And they're right, they're right there. They're right in contact. Neither one of them is violating that virtual boundary. And it works. The peg still fits in the hole. Now let's push our hole all the way to the other side doesn't violate the boundary here, we'll bring the peg in, lay it down all the way up against that edge of our bullseye, and it doesn't violate that boundary either. And it should work for orientation as well. If I take the uh, take the hole and I just, I, I, for whatever reason, my machine got bumped or something, and I run that uh, 
run that hole in on position but at maximum angle this thing the the peg will still fit even if I run the peg at uh, at this angle same thing here run the hole at an opposite angle over there and the peg still fits inside of that boundary so that's the reason for this concept of this boundary and if, if you are designing an assembly you have to figure out you have you you have to come up with the size of these circles the 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 bullseyes that we believe we can hit reliably in manufacturing and it's it's the bullseye for these holes and it's the uh, it's the bullseye for the pegs as well and as long as you can hit those day in and day out then this this boundary can then apply to both the pegs and the holes and the thousands and thousands of parts that you make will always fit together now some of you uh, astute observers will note that I haven't changed the size of the hole or of the uh, of the peg and I'm gonna cover that I've left that off just to just to keep it simple but in the next video I will that's gonna be the next thing I'm gonna cover is like well what happens great I've got I've got this boundary but what happens when my peg is not all the pegs are exactly the same size they're really close but if you start measuring these things down to the thousandths or down to the tenths some of the pegs are going to be a little bit bigger some of the holes are going to be a little bit smaller and when I when that happens it's going to start to encroach on that boundary so there are tools for dealing with that and we're going to talk about it but for now um, yeah there we are on that's lesson two of position tolerance um, Hopefully you guys find that helpful.